I am ambitious, but I'm not that ambitious. What I aim at doing is to point at the decays and to set the examples of how they can be corrected and to encourage people to correct them. And if that can be accepted, and if that can be adopted, and if that can be followed, then there's no problem. Of course, to improve your circumstances is to improve your environment. And when we were growing up as boys, we were taught to take blooms and sweep the household and clean the environment. You took garbage from the house into designated places and so on. These can still be done. We can encourage people to start by doing as little as that, to keep the environment clean, the household clean. And those who have now been privileged and think that by their privilege they ought to live elsewhere, we should encourage to come and visit, and visit frequently, so that they can help in encouraging us to have alteration in our fixed habits. They wouldn't like to come to visit places where they wouldn't have a step, place to step with their feet. But this, is where, this is where we were raised. Yes. This is the roots of our being. Mm -hmm. and therefore, we can't discard them. Yes, we ought will. to be there with them. And we ought to tell them that the circumstances you describe are abominable ones and they can be changed. You know, and those in the city centre also see people from the well endowed areas differently. And that brings us, brings us back to, you mentioned change. Yes. Change in Accra, changing things in Accra is never easy. They see change something else altogether, especially people in the central Gamashi area. One of the accusations leveled against you by your opponents is the fact that you are bringing change to customs and traditions, the rights that are performed in the Ghana state. That is one of the allegations they have made against you. Far and from they, me. Yes, Far and, they, from me any such intention. and they have claimed that it is a negative effect of education. One of the subjects they hold against those from the well endowed areas education it is a negative effect you know they are deprived of their education and they see an educated educated person differently you are a very well educated man i will come to that later that makes you change the rights and the traditions of the Ga people that no. is an allegation against you no 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 far be it from me in a such intention indeed i want to uphold and it is my duty a sworn duty to uphold the traditions of the people the interpretation of the tradition may foster change, but it doesn't mean that the value is being disturbed. You may think it's semantic, but let me explain to you that you can outdoor your child. And according to tradition, you must outdoor the child on the eighth day. But where circumstances of birth? and its attendant difficulties make it impossible for you to do it, we ought to have a situation in which we can doctor the tradition to accommodate this particular problem. For instance, recently you've heard of the Odadao beatings. The most so recent on. one. The most recent one. It is alleged that I had fostered a change of the tradition. I didn't do any such thing. What actually happened was we were confronted with a situation in which you had two chiefs claiming the stool from the same division. Which division is that? Basic division. And the Udadao is usually beaten by the basic manager. But the history behind it indicates that this has been a preserve of the Ga manager and he delegated it when it was impossible for him to have returned from a war to the basic manager to beat you that out. But the messenger who brought the, the message was delayed by a day. Therefore, the basic manager had to go to the royal household with drinks to beg permission, even though he had been commissioned, to take the drumming sticks to go and perform the ceremony. 
And therefore, when a busy manager does it, he does it as a delegated duty, not as a right. And therefore, he comes year after year with his drinks in hand to take the drumming sticks and he returned them after he has performed the ceremony with a thank you drink to the royal household of the Garmanche. But when the Garmanche beats the Udada drums himself, he does so on Wednesdays. And that has been the tradition. With the difficulty of two busy managers and not knowing what would be the attendant response from the people, if both of them were allowed to perform the same ceremony, naturally, it would have been riotous, it would have been unanticipated. You played them and the riots were there. Precisely. And the reason is very simple. Those who should know better went about saying that the Garmanje had taken away the right of Bisi and the Bisi Manje to perform that which is his personal preserve. And the Garmanje did it this year with the full acquiescence of the Ghana Traditional Council and in consultation and presence of the Nai Romo and his household when the matter was being deliberated. So it was a bit rich for people to go out there and say that here's Garmanje, after only one year in office, having to change something as traditionally founded as the Udada. This is unthinkable. And those who did it know very well that they were causing mischief and promoting riot, which was the result that we had. To blame it on me is sad because the responsibility rests fully elsewhere. And I'm not interested in pointing fingers. Where did you spend most of your childhood? I did in the cradle of the Gar Mashi. Precisely where? I was born in St. Pei. My mother was from Asana Georgia. My father lived at a place called Lions Day, off Horse Road and at the corner of August Street. It's very well, very, very near the post office. Okay. I did everything every gar boy had ever done. I'd gone fishing in the sea. I had gone farming with the uncles. But above all that, I became a boy scout. In a boy scout in Something school? I was it in school? From school? From school. Which school? I was school? about four or five, I think, from Bishop Boys School. Okay. But before I went to Bishop Boys School, I went to wayward schools. I went to a school called um, Ayrohi. Where is that school now? Uh, it's it it's exist? gone with history. And then there was another one called Abalai School. Abalai I'm sure Ayohe School has transcended to this moment where people talk a lot about you, Ayohe. Yeah, that's the infliction of history upon my life. And people I'm, I'm will continue happy. to talk about you. I'm happy they would. And it would be sad if nobody recognized me nor talked about me. After all, I'm supposed to be presiding over five million people. So if they don't talk about me, they will be doing themselves the service. What was your Christian life like? Oh, a very... Which rigid, you mean? Are you a Christian? I was a Christian. You were? Yes. Are you now? I am. Which denomination do you... I'm an Anglican, I think. I say so because I don't know the way the Anglicans perceive themselves. Because if you do not attend their giving churches, then they look upon you with askance that I want to be one who is uh, free enough to attend every Anglican church that comes in view, and one that is most convenient to me. What did you learn in the Boy Scout that has helped you, helped you to know? Everything I have gone through in life has been derived from my days in the Boy Scout movement. I know how to cook, to wash, to 